Thanks for tuning in everyone. This is Connor from Futures Analytica bringing you a live futures trading exhibition of the latest Polarity ATI update. This update aims to not only greatly reduce the amount of dependency of discretionary decision making regarding arm conditions and setting changes, but to also provide a substantial increase in the overall accuracy of the system as a whole. Starting out the trading day, we are on ES like usual using our personal trading account. We're going to be trading four contracts at a 15 tick TPSL, meaning per trade we are risking $750 to make $750 for every trade we take. Our approach to trading the market with this newest update will be almost identical to our normal strategy, with the only difference being that we are going to be relying more on the system making decision making for us rather than our own, which is why with the market inside of a range here we have flipped on auto arm and we're just going to let the system do its thing. This update will consist of two parts. The first part, which has been released this morning, is quite small in the amount of features compared to what will be released in December, but contains the portion of this update that provides the performance enhancement that I have mentioned earlier. And right there is our first fully automatic fill of the day. Once again, we're going as hands off as possible here. Once we've switched auto arm on, we're not making any changes to the strategy unless I state otherwise. By using full auto mode with auto arm, we're attempting to ride out any potentially low entropy moves. Essentially, what the update that we have now pushed to Polarity does is that it will filter out deceptive market orders, which before was the cause of imbalances forming and then disappearing, sometimes before the blink of an eye. What was such a pain about these is that imbalances can and do disappear, but before this update, you had to differentiate between the normal action of an imbalance disappearing and an action caused by deceitful information, which will no longer be an issue. This filtration algorithm is configured by changing the numerical value called adversary detection. We've packaged the software to, by default, include the optimal settings for this variable, which is a value of five, and you shouldn't need to change it unless you want to. However, for more advanced users, you have the option to tune this variable to a higher or lower number. If you want to use polarity like it was before this update, simply set the number to zero. Over Thanksgiving, I did get a new trading environment, and we're still trying to manually move over to the new system, so that's why our PL display was on points instead of currency until this part of the video. Right as we get filled for a profit on that last one, we get another consecutive trade, with this one being immediately after the close. We're always monitoring delta and price, which for the time being is very correlated, which is perfect for trend mode. We seem to have gotten a great little streak here, which is allowing us for a high amount of trades back to back. Usually in this new update, there's a five to 10 minute gap between trades now, even with the system in arm both mode when the market isn't trending. These trades that are being taken are the exact same entries that would have happened on older versions of Polarity, but with much less overall trade volume since we're filtering out quite a few trades. If you play video games, think of this new feature as a trigger bot, where you have the same potential accuracy as before, just with far less time off target on the trigger. I don't think it would be presumptuous to say that I'm an expert at trading this system, and I'm a big believer in the phrase, especially in trading, that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think it speaks volumes to state that I no longer trade without this new filtration algorithm disabled, ever. So I highly recommend at least giving it a shot, even if you're already good at trading polarity. To top that statement off, we got another awesome auto arm fill there for the fourth winning trade of the day. Auto arm in conjunction with this new update also avoids this area of chop that forms on the way down without getting tripped up, which is awesome. Right after we pass that area without any difficulties, we get a valid triple stack and we're in another short trade. I think we were pushing our luck here though, as in that area of chop, we saw two delta divergences and delta's absolute value is now decreasing bar over bar. So while we're in this trade, without touching anything else, we're turning on regression mode, which would be the safer option in this case. I think this new and updated system is as handholdy as it gets when trading. Even if you aren't able to catch these switches to regression, the system is smart enough so that you're allowed to make plenty of mistakes without substantially dipping into your PL as you learn the system. Right as that trade closes, we get pushed into a regressive trade. 
Price keeps his momentum for a little bit, but loses steam as they are absorbed by passive buyers. After so much continuous downward movement, it was pretty transparent that after the small support prior, that there would be some change in the market dynamic. Now this portion is sped up about 16 times in post, and it's a good opportunity to make a point about price velocity and how that affects you. One thing that's somewhat difficult to notice when scrolling back on a chart is the speed in which price moves to its final destination. Not how fast the ticks are coming in, not volume, and not chop that moves at light speed, but genuinely how much progress is being made in the formation of this leg per se. In this case, it's extremely slow, which is why we're leaving it in regression. So after that trade, we flip off auto arm and instead arm both but we're not doing so in order to take more manual control. It's just that with the new red SR line forming, AutoArm will never take a trade until it goes below that red line. And we want to induce a regressive trade of some sort, not just below that red line where a trend would be required to form. Even with auto arm off, you're going to see the system constantly armed with no human intervention. I want to iterate that there is a massively lower dependence on when you have the strategy armed now compared to previous versions of polarity that you've seen in my prior videos. You're now able to focus primarily on regression versus trend selection versus juggling the two at the same time as knowing which direction to arm and which direction to disarm. The system's techniques will now focus primarily on arming both instead of in one singular direction and having arm on a majority of the time rather than the minority of the time. And there is our second regressive trade with a very simple decision map being made. Look at this area of our previous trade where Delta was continuously blue yet price was not. This indicates a low correlation between price and Delta, which is a high entropy zone. And in high entropy zones, we go regressive. But this whole day today, we've only switched modes once, and a stark comparison can be made to the inputs I've made today versus my previous videos, where it seems that you need to be hyper fixated and somewhat stressed out to use the system like I do. Whereas now I actually very much enjoy the trading experience rather than just the outcome. I think this factor really does open the door to possibly live streaming in the short term future. As before, I think trading was far too stressful to be comfortable doing so but this really has changed things in regards to the mental and emotional workload. If I did start streaming, it would be without commentary, but as I became more comfortable with it, I think that could change. I need to be careful about regulations involving live streaming my trades, but I'm working on a couple of possible solutions to prevent me from breaking any rules while still providing a worthwhile viewing experience. Being consistently correct about not only how a potential trade will work out, but the manner in which it will do so based on actual quantitative factors is an unmatched feeling. I'm not just trying to sell this update to you guys. It's a completely free update. I'm just genuinely really passionate about how much of an improvement our team made on this system. Anyway, we're making zero changes to our previous course of action. We're going to be leaving arm both enabled and keeping it in regression mode. It takes about 30 seconds from the close of the last trade for us to get filled into a new one here. We're getting a bit closer to more of a lower entropy market dynamic. However, I would still consider this high enough entropy to continue with this trade. You may have noticed that regressive trades often end up taking extensive periods of time to fill when compared with their trend counterparts. What should be even more interesting is that with regressive trades, as time inside of the trade increases, so does your win rate. And the opposite is true with trend trades. A good visualization of how to stick with your strategy when doing this is that in the bigger picture, you're not trying to predict where future price is going to be when you trade, especially with auto arm or with arm both enabled. You're actually only trading off of how price is going to get to where it's going. You're not interested in where it's going in the end. You're just curious on how it's going to get there. And this only works because of the massive leverage futures trading offers. These 15 tick moves 
are only fractions of a percent, yet we can command huge amounts of leverage with very small amounts of money. These small moves that are often ignored or even thrown away with option spread is our bread and butter. It's important to note that at this scale, institutional presence is extremely noticeable, and that's exactly why we're trading off of order flow and balances in order to scalp that. Moved our TP up a bit uh, to that magnetic zone we had marked up high there just for fun, but um, we hadn't lost a trade today, so why not? It worked out in the end, but I will go over the concepts behind those zones in a separate video, but um, probably a good idea to not do that until you um, learn that, but yeah. Anyway, uh, that wraps up the day for us there. 5.5K on the day is not shabby at all, especially with zero losses and an extremely hands-off approach. We had varying market conditions through this session and it wouldn't be presumptuous to say that polarity handled itself very, very well. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in seeing more of this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all very soon.